So, um, Coach and Alison, what do you expect tomorrow's match against Panama? I'll take it first. Um, nothing has been decided group-wise, so we expect um, <clears throat> Panama to come out and it's going to be a dark fight. So, it's, you know, we expect a tight game from Panama. Again, the, Panama is here for a reason, to qualify. And as I said before, nothing has been decided. And all the teams in this World Cup seem to come out and give it their best. And we have to be... Um, very good to to get a result against Panama. So, but I expect Panama to come out and fight to the bitter end. Um, yeah, pretty much uh, the same. Um, you know, us and Panama, we both are still fighting for our first win in a World Cup, um, and that's something that you know you can't take lightly. That kind of hunger um, to make history for your country. So. Um, you know, we expect them to come out flying. Um, we also, I mean, I expect them to be confident because we're a familiar opponent for them. Um, and I think we have that same type of confidence. And, um, you know, the last time we faced each other was um, a high pressure match. Um, so it's gonna be quite similar this time around. And yeah, I think we're just gonna try to use our momentum um, from our previous game to, to kind of lead us out there tomorrow. Thank you very much. So now for us, yours, uh, Michael Moyes and Leros, please. Hi there, Ben Smith from West Australian English. Uh, Lauren, as a coach, how do you approach this game coming off, I guess, an emotional high of that result against France? Do you have to prepare the team any differently as to, you know, guard against, uh, you know, a team who are, you know, maybe the underdogs in Panama? Yeah, I mean, we have to treat it the way we treat ourselves against France. I mean, if they're the underdog, we don't look at them as being an underdog. We look at them as a competitor, as Alison just said. We have played a few times, and it's, it was a dog fight. So, you know, we had a we, we had a night of high coming out of France, and after that, that celebration is over. It's time to move on. It's time to try to get your first win and, and you know, secure, your, secure a better position. So that's how we look at it. We have to be ready. And Alison, uh, what's the spirit of the squad after that, like after that game against France? Obviously, we saw the what it meant to you guys after the final whistle. Uh, you know, has that carried through into uh, training over the next few days? Yeah, I mean, the spirit of the group is great. Um, yeah, obviously, we were we were buzzing after that um, that result, um, and I think that yeah, we let it marinate for for a day, for a night, um, and then immediately, you know, everything kind of became focused on this next match um, because ultimately. You know, we did something great um, against France, but um, <laughs> that can easily be a race tomorrow if we don't show up um, and, you know, put our best foot forward again. Um, so I think, yeah, the group is just excited to be in a position to still compete in this group. Um, and ultimately, yeah, we've had one primary objective, which was getting out of this group. So that dream is alive and it, it counts tomorrow what we do as well. Well, and in terms of obviously there's no Khadija Shaw due to suspension and it's hard to replace everything that she does, but in terms of, you know, finding someone to, uh, you know, to fill that void up front, what are your options looking like? Yeah, I mean, you're all time leading scorer, whether it's men or Jamaica. I mean, whether it's men or women for Jamaica football, yeah, that's a tough replacement. But um, as a group, we're very resilient. We always find a way to get, to get stuff done. And, and we, have, we have somebody... You know, ready to go. People are rearing, ready to go. It's the World Cup. We will obviously put somebody in there. Um, could take more than one to get her job done. So, I mean, I don't think I'm going to... We just prepare them. I prepare that person and just get after it. We might change a few things, but not much. Alison, you were, a, you were part of the team at the last World Cup. How does this experience compare to you know, four years ago? Has it... Has it changed? Have you kind of felt, you know, four years of growth have kind of better prepared you for this tournament? Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a calmness amongst the people that have been here um, before. Uh, I think that, you know, your first tournament is is a lot. And I think, you know, when it's when every single person is experiencing that, it, it can be a lot of emotions to juggle. And I think that, you know, in that first match, you saw that 
the players that had been here before had a sense of calmness about them and it just um, was able to kind of pass on to players who were in this situation for the first time. Um, and yeah, I think that the hunger is still there, the, the excitement is the same, it's just a bit more refined and, you know, I think, um, you know, the results kind of speak to, to that change in experience. Lauren, it's been touched on, obviously, the fact that Jamaica, you know, have a really good chance at winning their first Women's World Cup game tomorrow night. What has been your message to the squad in pursuit of that goal? Yeah, we got to, I mean, we have to approach it again as, you know, you know, we just consider ourselves as being underdog all the time. We have to come out with that mentality. Our work ethics has to be good. Uh, we can't rely on what happened in the past. As I say, this is the future. So we are futuristic and we've got to move on. So our, our, our approach is to come out, to come out and um, fight all the way. And if, you know, if it goes good, then you know, we, we stay with it. If something goes bad, then we've got to fight to get back on the good side. So it's going to be a fight, and we're, we're ready to fight. Alison, um, you know, Jamaica have had to go for a lot just to get here. Are you able to, I guess, give us an insight into some of the struggles that you guys have faced just to, you know, to be at this tournament? Yeah, um, obviously, you know, <laughs> the media is there. Everyone sees what we've kind of dealt with in the lead up to this tournament. And, you know, one thing that I kind of think of just in general is you see this kind of underdog narrative with us and with a lot of other teams um, that struggle with things that kind of happen off the pitch. Um, and I think what you're seeing here is that um, all these teams, ourselves included, um, teams that maybe less was expected of us because of some of the adversity we've kind of had to overcome, um, you know, we've come and we're here to play. Um, we've, able, we've been able to, you know, put that stuff um, to the side for us right now to be able to focus on getting the results that we want. Um, and yeah, ultimately, how we perform in this tournament is just more credibility for us moving forward, um, fighting for the things that we want to see changed. And what message are you hoping to send to the fans of the Federation back home with your performances? Yeah, I think, you know, the message that we want to send has always been the same, um, that, you know, women's football is legitimate. Um, we're here to compete. This is our livelihood. Um, it's the thing that brings us joy. It's our passion. And, um, you know, yeah, I think that that's really the message is that this is this is, you know, the ultimate honor for all of us. And we're always going to be fighting and pushing to be uh, treated as, as we feel like we should. Uh, excuse, excuse me. Uh, if may I ask somebody um, has a question? OK, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so you can, you, can, you can go ahead. Thank you. Sorry, I thought it was the other one. It's fine. Yeah. Lauren, <laughs> I guess as a coach as well, when you look at you know, your result against France, but also the you know, results of what people would call lesser nations at this World Cup, you know, Philippines beating New Zealand, New Zealand beating Norway, you know, how much heart do you take from that as a coach knowing that, you know, not only have you done it against France, but, you know, the so-called smaller nations are on the up in, the, in women's football? Well, just real quick, the lesser nation, as, they, as, as, as people term it, you know, you know we don't look, as, look at ourselves as lesser people. But it, it just comes down to, you know, better resources, better diet, better fitness, better overall preparation for us. And, you know, we have better coaching and coaching staff and technical staff and, you know, all the way through. And I think it just comes down to, you know, that's a little bit better. So, again, I think the sky is the limit for some of these countries because if, if, if we can find the resources that some of the bigger, so-called bigger countries have, I think the future is bright. Hey, we had brown Eric and Jamaica coach. Um, Jamaica stands on the edge of doing something truly historic. First victory and uh, maybe um, advancing. Um, does this put more pressure on the team? There's always pressure. I mean, you're in a World Cup, so I don't see a situation where there's not going to be pressure. There's always pressure, but um, if there's pressure and the composure and the calmness comes in when you play, you know, after you kick the ball, after the first two, three minutes, that goes away. It's just a game, you know, and we, we're going to go out there and compete. But it put pressures on, but I don't think they, they, they trying to win your first game is more pressure than trying to get through to the next round because that's our objective. So you have to win game to get to the next round, and that's our objective. Next question? Yes, uh, gentlemen, please. 
So, uh, what's one thing that you've liked about your time here in Australia so far? Have you had much chance to explore? Um, what's one thing that I've liked about um, being in Australia so far? Hmm. Give me a second. Um, well, we have, to be honest, we haven't had a lot of free time, um, but I will say everyone has been really, really um, friendly and hospitable. I think that, you know, from the second we landed in the airport, um, we were really warmly greeted, and as we've traveled, um, it's been the same pretty much everywhere we've been. Um, and so, yeah, I think that that's one of the, the lasting impressions I've, I'll have is just how welcoming everyone has been to us here. And I just, I second that, but we're still trying to see a wild kangaroo. <laughs> yeah, no kangaroos yet. Or koalas. Or what's that other thing? What was that thing they gave us yesterday? Not the scorpion, okay. Is that right? <laughs> okay, uh, anyone? No questions? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I have one uh, information to the media. So, so the team Jamaica will have the familiarization at 2.45 here at the first uh, Riflegra Stadium, then do the official training at 4 p.m. at Brilliant Garden. Thank you very much. Thank you, Coach and Alison. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yes, Gregory Simmons here. Um, on live with Eddie Vision. Please like, share the video. It's a great great show. Um, happy to be a part of it.